A Self-Sealing Bullet Trap from Household Waste, William Hovey Smith, 2020. I'm an author, and I've done some 20 books, most of which are outdoor titles. But I also have a business book, Create Your Own Job Security, Plan to Start Your Own Business at Midlife. In this book, I advocate that anyone at any age, at any place, at any time, start their own businesses when they need to raise a little money, like maybe right now, and tell you exactly how to do it. This is Hobie Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And what our project is today is to build a self-sealing bullet trap out of everyday materials. Uh, this is following the Billy Joe Rubido principle of taking what you've got and making what you need. And if you don't know who Billy Joe was, well, uh, you can look him up. R-U-B-I-D-E-O-U-X. And you will find him. Well, what we've got here is some sand from our sand mine, 120 yards in that direction, cardboard boxes, styrofoam, and ordinary plastic grocery bags. And from these, we're going to build a self-sealing bullet trap to stop things like 45 ACP, which I have to test so I can make some hunting bullets for the fall. What the general procedure is going to be is to take those plastic bags and punch them down in front of the styrofoam block. The styrofoam itself is certainly not self-sealing, but it'll provide a suitable barrier between the sand behind styrofoam and then our compressed plastic bags. Now this is a heavy box as it needs to be. So yeah, once we get this thing loaded, it's gonna to be too heavy to lift handily. When this box is loaded up, it'll have 200 pounds of dry sand in it. Do not use wet or damp sand because that will destroy the cardboard. Hence the cart. So we're going to build it in the cart, we're going to transport it in the cart, and we're going to shoot it in the cart. So let's get started. I've started compressing the bags down. But I'm going to stop right about here so we can add some sand to the back. We've added about 30 pounds of sand to the box now. And we're going to finish filling it up. Now that we have the box full of sand, we're going to go ahead and ram it full of plastic bags and then we'll be ready to actually use it. Our bullet trap has been delivered to the range. Uh, we are now ready to start shooting. The first loads I'm going to shoot are those at the top of the loading block and those are the half jacket bullets that I bought back in the 1970s but that expanded real good before uh, when I shot them in media. These bullets are very uniform in weight and they shot a little high and left when I fired them before so I'm going to correspondingly aim a little low right and see if we can't center them more nearly in the middle of the target. some reason or other, they had not wanted a quiet chamber right. See how they did. My point of aim was right about here. And the group did fly a little up and right, although not quite as much as I was expecting. And there they are. eight rounds which is all I fired so all are certainly contained in the box so those don't seem to work all that well the reliability of feed is certainly an issue the next are going to be our cast bullets six successful fired these had a different pattern about two inches broad and stringing up and down 
for about oh nearly 10 inches. How is our self-sealing bullet trap performing? Well, very well. All of those impacts have shifted it a little bit, but no sand appreciably is leaking from the box. And I can see some sand being disturbed out of the box on the top. Some of the strikes being a little bit high and the sand sort of settling now. Uh, some of it is being displaced with the shot and actually thrown from the box. None, however, has penetrated out of the box yet. We have fired a number of rounds at the box, and thus far its self-sealing qualities have held up. Even in here, where you see a very large density of shots, and even more so, when I remove the latest target. So there's not much happening in here. I don't even feel any sand on the inside. So, as a self-sealing bullet trap, uh, I think this is a 100% success. We were somewhat bothered by ants during all of this which proceeded to climb up my chair and up my legs and all over me and the equipment and the bullets and everything else uh, foraging for food, but uh, no lasting damage done. Uh, and certainly not up to Indiana Jones standards in the kingdom of the crystal skull or even our local fire ants for that matter. But nonetheless an annoyance. I'm going to cut down that box on the front side so we can see better what's actually going on. Uh, before I start cutting on it, you can see the number of hits, and particularly concentrated in the center, uh, where there is just an open gap here. There's basically nothing in this area. Okay, we pull this down. Our layers of bags compressed here do not have any sand in them at all. They've been pushed into the styrofoam itself. I'm finally getting a little sand when I pull out some of these styrofoam bags. Now we get sand flowing through the hole, which we didn't have previously. The combination of the sand and the styrofoam block really helped. You can see the block there itself. That was shot away and eroded 
on the inside. There are some styrofoam fragments pushed back into the sand itself. Some bits of plastic Now I'm finally getting, I'm getting bullets now. I'm getting bullet fragments into the wall here. And this is at about a foot of loose sand. I'm feeling quite a few of them here in the hand. I'm still uncovering styrofoam. They're a foot six inches back. He's expanded and penetrated up to, I'd say, about 18 inches. This is where I burn out a tree once upon a time. And it left a hole in my yard, so I'm going to use the sand to fill it. And incidentally, recover my bullets. Our sand is distributed in our hole. Uh, we purposely did not fill in a little creature burrow here, which is, oh, who knows? That looks like it was probably made by one of our small tortoises. So uh, we will leave him be. It could be occupied by a snake. It could be occupied by a toad. It could have almost anything in it these days. Uh, and whatever it is, or they are, uh, we will leave them lay. Our self-sealing bullet trap was almost 100% effective. Only one bullet actually escaped the trap, and that was because it was a low hit and ran on the cardboard right at the very bottom and was still contained in the steel cart. What did the shooting tell us? Well, one thing it told us that these half jacket bullets that I bought back in the 1970s uh, would not function reliably in the pistol. Uh, they would feed if you dropped them in the chamber one by one, but that was just too much friction apparently from the softer lead that, uh, for it to feed properly. So these are no longer of any use to me, so these are going back in the melting pot. When we shot, I aimed about here, and this was the group of the half jacket bullets. Uh, 
uh, pretty reasonable. A little scatter up and down, but okay. The center group through here is my hand cast bullets. And I got a flyer down here at the bottom, but the rest of them did reasonably well. I wanted to shoot up everything I had so I would have plenty of cases to reload. Most of the bullets that I had loaded were the 230 grain Hornaday bullets. And this was their group. Uh, this is good enough to kill deer-sized game. However, uh, the bullets are expensive at about 45 bucks for per hundred. Now, when we tested previously, we found that the Winchester factory ammunition in 230 grain jacketed hollow points outperformed it. I still have 16 rounds left. This is probably enough to get me through a hunting season. So if I want to use these bullets, I'll use the better commercial bullets. So far as the cast bullets were concerned, when shot previously with a baffle board, they expanded to about this diameter. This is almost three quarters of an inch. Then, in the sand, some of them didn't get quite that much expansion. And most of them actually wound up like this. They did deform a little bit, but not, not nearly so much. So this would be a good bullet hardness for a big hog. So this is what I'm going to recast and try to obtain this hardness level so I get this performance or a little better. Meaning that I get maximum penetration in case I do run into a big hog. Uh, consequently, I'm going to have to restrict my shots to uh, neck and head shots. So we learned a lot. We're going to clean these bullets a little bit, roll them around in a box, knock some of the loose sand off of them, cast them, add some more alloy, because most of this is about pure lead, and harden them up some, and then we'll use our Lee mold here again and cast up some fresh loads for deep penetrating hard bullets. But now, this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. A homemade bullet trap like this has the following advantages. It allows you to recover your bullets and your expensive custom bullet alloys. It doesn't generate the lead dust of steel traps, and it can be put up nearly anywhere. However, I accept no responsibility for these kinds of traps put up or used by anyone anywhere. Now, be safe. Uh, pay attention to the legalities of your particular situation and what might happen if your bullets penetrate the box or you miss the trap altogether. Now these work best with low velocity expanding handgun and muzzle loading bullets. I haven't shot any full patch government ammunition in it so I don't know what would be required. Uh, so if you do shoot government loads uh, add another foot of sand just to make sure. As with all shooting, obey your local laws and safety guidelines. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 825 videos, go to www.hoviesmith.com. To find out more about my novel, screenplay, and book, Father of the Grooms, go to fatherofthegrooms.net. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.